To understand astronomy, one needs to have some background. Here's my crash course on esoteric astronomy in six quick lessons. The Earth revolves about the Sun in a plane called the ecliptic. The twelve constellations of fixed stars that intersect the ecliptic are called the zodiac. All the stars of the zodiac are actually our close neighbors compared to the size of our entire galaxy. The Earth's equator is tilted some 23 and a half degrees with respect to the ecliptic. Gary Osborne's fascinating Paradigm Shift website shows how the angle of the Earth's tilt is symbolized in art. Here are Isis and Osiris raising the Jed, which amazingly matches the angle of the Earth's tilt. And here again the 23 and a half degree angle matches the slope of the pyramid on the dollar bill. Osborne has found this same angle symbolized in many other pieces of esoteric art. The Earth's tilt is the reason we experience seasons. The seasons are defined by the Earth's orbit, which contains two solstices and two equinoxes. Looking at the solar system from above, the seasons naturally make a cross. Witcherink and Parlier call this the Earth Cross. Our galaxy is called the Milky Way because its myriad stars resemble milk streaking our night skies. If you were able to look at our galaxy edge on, you would see it as a flattened disk. This flattened structure is what makes the Milky Way look like a narrowly defined streak in the sky, rather than an even distribution of stars. The central plane of the galactic disk is called its midplane. The ecliptic is tilted some 120 degrees with respect to the midplane, naturally making a cross in two dimensions. Witcherink and Parlier call this the galactic cross. Imagine beginning a journey outside the galaxy, flying through the zodiac, passing by each one of the visible planets, and stopping on Earth for a while. After a short stay, you begin the journey home, traveling out past the planets, through the zodiac, and on toward the center of the galaxy. This route describes the mystical journey of the soul. It is mirrored in the Ptolemaic or geocentric cosmology that predated Copernicanism. The ancient Egyptians represented beginning and ending waypoints along the journey of the soul with silver and golden gates. Witcherink and Parlier show that the direction of the Silver Gate is located between the horns of Taurus as seen from Earth. You can find the horns by following Orion the Hunter's Club or Monoceros the Unicorn's Horn because both point at the intersection of the galactic midplane and the ecliptic, a point known to the Egyptians as the Silver Gate. Isis, shown with horns framing the sun disk, symbolizes her guardianship of the Silver Gate or gate of birth. On the opposite side of the zodiac, the golden gate is located close to where the arrow of Sagittarius is pointing and where the stinger of Scorpio is reaching. The golden gate is the second place where the galactic midplane and ecliptic intersect. The winged scarab framing a sun disk was used to symbolize guardianship over the golden gate or gate of death. The scarab is an appropriate symbol because of how this insect pushes dung balls backward with its hind legs, mimicking the sun's retrograde processional motion through the zodiac. The coat of arms for the state of Vatican City features silver and gold keys because these are the keys to the kingdom that Christ gave to Peter. Pietro Perugino's fresco in the Sistine Chapel shows Christ giving one silver and one gold key to Peter. I see the two Roman arches flanking the fresco as secretly depicting the Egyptian silver and golden gates. The octagonal domed building in the center clearly represents the sun, and the perspective grid must be the ecliptic. The people in the piazza are taking the journey of the soul. I was taught as a child to follow the outer edge of the Big Dipper to find the North Star Polaris. In the past, this rule of thumb didn't always work, because the celestial pole changes over time due to the Earth's precession. When the Great Pyramid was built, the star Thuban in the constellation Draco was the North Star. 
Remember, one of the pyramid shafts point at Thuban. The celestial pole actually traces out a circle in the heavens, representing the 25,920-year processional cycle. This cycle is called the Great Year. In 3D, the Great Year is seen as a processional cone swept out over time by the Earth's tilted axis. The Earth's processional cone, the Sun, and the galactic midplane will precisely align on winter solstice 2012. Author John Major Jenkins calls this phenomenon galactic alignment. The Mayan Long Count Calendar was designed to end on winter solstice, December 21, 2012. Acharya S. says in The Christ Conspiracy, Many of the world's crucified godmen had their traditional birthdays on December 25th. This date is set because the ancients recognized that the sun makes an annual descent southward until after midnight of December 21st, the winter solstice, when it stops moving southerly for three days and was born again after midnight of December 24th. Thus, these many different cultures celebrated with great joy the Son of God's birthday on December 25th. Christmas 2012 marks the beginning of a new great year. The Milky Way galaxy has a rotational period that I like to call the galactic year. It lasts approximately 224 million years. Our solar system is related to the larger cycle through number. There are 8,640 great years in the galactic year. It's amazing how the Earth's processional cycle, the number of the Sun, and the decad harmonize with the galactic year.